Guys, I have a word, but I first need to read the scripture that the Lord has given to me. Um, in, Levit in Leviticus 4, it talks, it teaches about, most of Leviticus talks about the different offerings, burnt offerings, sin offering, all types of these things that were, that were done. The priests would, would do these, these, uh, would make these sacrifices each and every time somebody was sinned, whether it was a, the priest, an individual, a ruler, the congregation, they would have to go through this whole process where they, you know, bring whatever they're bringing, some sort of a bullock, ram, goat, turtle dove, whatever it was without blemish. And then they will do these sacrifices. Thank God for Jesus Christ. Thank God for his, for his son who died on the cross for us that we no longer need to do these things. I imagine that it was just tedious. I imagine that there was just, we were reaching a shortage of, or they were reaching a shortage of, it, of animals because they, they were sinning a lot, okay? And it was time consuming as well. For the sake of this word, there's something the Lord wants me to read to you. And I'm going to use, I'm going to read chapter four that talks about a portion of it that talks about the sin offerings. And so it says here, and the Lord spake unto Moses saying, speak unto the children of Israel saying, if a soul should sin through ignorance against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which ought not to be done and shall do against any of them so meaning if a priest that is anointed do sin according to the sin of the people then let him bring for his sin which he hath sinned a young bullock okay so some sort of cattle without blemish unto the lord for a sin offering and he shall bring the bullock unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the lord and shall lay his hand upon the bullock's head and kill the bullock before the Lord. And the priest that is anointed shall take of the bullock's blood and bring it to the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle and sprinkle of the blood seven times before the Lord, before the veil of the sanctuary. And the priest shall pour some of the blood upon the horns of the altar of sweet incense before the Lord, which is in the tabernacle of the congregation and shall pour all the blood of the bullock at the bottom of the altar of the burnt offering, which is at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he shall take off from it all the fat of the bullock for the sin offering, the fat that covers the innards and all the fat that is upon the inwards. Okay. And the two kidneys and the fat that is upon them, which is by the flanks and the call above the liver with the kidneys, it shall he take away. As it was taken off from the bullocks of the sacrifice of peace offerings and the priest shall burn them upon the altar of the burnt offering and the skin of the bullock and all his flesh with his head and with his legs and his inwards and his dung. Even the whole bullock shall he carry forth without the camp unto a clean place where the ashes are poured out and burn him on the wood with fire where the ashes are poured out shall he be burnt. Can you imagine having to do all of that? There's a reason why the Lord had me reach this particular, read this particular scripture. Because what he wants to say to someone, some individuals who this applies to, is you need to put yourself on the altar of the Lord. There's some things he needs to clean out of you. You know, when... One of the things that I realized was when anyone had a sin, they had to bring that particular thing. So let's say a bullock, a ram, they will bring it and they would 
they would stand at the door of the tabernacle and that person had to put their hand. So if I sinned and I was back then, I think the men did it. But if a person sinned, that person will bring that bullock without blemish. Bring it to the door of the tabernacles at the entrance. He would slay the animal. Once the blood is being spilled from the animal and all of that, then, the, you know, the priest will then intercept and do their part. But the person would first bring that animal, acknowledge their sins, putting it upon that animal and slaying the animal. So God is calling those of you that I'm about to identify. It's time to bring this habit the stronghold to him and allow the Lord to completely remove these things that is that are keeping you bound. And what am I talking about today? The Lord has had me in the area of relationships. Some of you, you man, you woman have been in relationships. Let me start with the, the, the man first. You've been in a relationship where you were with a woman that mistreated you. She cheated, she did wrong, she did all kinds of wrong things to you, low down dirty things to you. Now you have a woman who treats you well and you are now treating her badly. To you, uh, woman, what young lady, miss, you've been in relationships in the past or you were with someone that used to treat you really badly, disrespect you, maybe physically abuse you, did all types of wrong to you, disrespected you a lot. And now you have this man in your life who is treating you well and with respect, and you are now disrespecting him, speaking to him with disrespect. In both scenarios, both male and female, you both have the history you have a history in previous relationships where you were treated badly. And now you're in a relationship with someone that treats you better than you've ever been treated before. And now you find yourself, you are now in a state of displacement. You are dogging that man out like these, like the man that used to date dog you out. You are treating him the way you used to be treated by your previous relationship and the type of men that you're used to. You, sir, are now mistreating this woman who loves you, who's loyal, and, and she's, she's, she's being faithful, but you're accusing her. You're doing all these things based on the things that you've experienced in your last relationship or the type of women that you're, you've dealt with in the past. And God is calling you man and woman because you are his child. You are claiming that you know Jesus Christ. He's calling you to the altar to repent. He wants you to bring all of that, all those things and lay it on his altar. Get in his presence so he can remove all of that. Because what is happening, my brothers and sisters, you're still in a soul tie. You're still in a soul tie with the person from your past. So what's happening is... They have deposited abusive seeds in you. And so now that you're in a good relationship, that spirit, that abusive spirit, those seeds of hurt and maltreatment, it's rising up in you. And so what's going to happen is you are now projecting this on the new person in your life. And you're either going to end up destroying this person in your life and they become a little monster towards you. Or you're going to end up breaking up with this person. The person ends up leaving you. And what's going to happen, you're going to go back to what you've always known. This is the whole purpose of the spirit. You left that relationship. You Maybe you're now remarried or maybe you're now dating someone. And more you're married to the person, as I said. But you are, you are still filled with with the seeds you have still you are still being tormented by the strongholds and the and the soul ties you see soul ties soul ties are not always sexual fond memories 
Sometimes your soul tied to abuse. Your soul tied to the spirit of disrespect. A, a spirit that cusses you out. You would have more respect for someone. You would try harder for someone who's running around on you, doing stuff to you, or slapping you in your mouth. Slapping you in your mouth. And this is not normal. So these things are things that needs to be brought to the Lord and placed on the altar of God. So that these things can be removed. The Holy Spirit can burn away those things can take those things that's still in you the the listen your 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 kidneys and all these different things are vital organs my brothers and sisters so what happens sometimes in these cases is you are still you are still being infiltrated in your heart you're still being in, infiltrated in ways my brothers and sisters that it's just permeating into your very being everything about you you are permeated and you, by the trauma of the things that have happened to you and so that man that woman from the past that spirit still has you has that spirit still has a stronghold on you still holding on to you because ultimately it wants you to come back it wants you to go back so you're going to destroy what good the Lord has placed in your life. And then you find yourself going back to the abuse. Some of you may even be seeing someone on the side and, and the person is completely opposite. They're not nice. They're nasty. They are just like the people you used to, what you used to date. But my brothers and sisters, I'm trying to tell you that spirit's goal is to get you to abuse and lose this relationship that you have. So that ultimately you will return to it. And how are you going to return to it? By going to somebody that has that the, the abusive dispositions that you're used to. Because you see what's happening is you become the abuser. Because those seeds of abuse has been placed in you and it has not been removed. And now you are, you are you're seen through the blinded eyes of rage. Someone is living the nightmare that someone else caused in your life. God is calling you to the altar. He wants you to lay out all of that on the altar. Come before him, repent, acknowledge your sins, and pray and ask the Lord to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Because he hears the prayers of your mate. And if it's somebody that you are dating and someone that God is truly working in their life, God is not. The Holy Spirit will guard their hearts and remove that person from your life. He's not going to have you to destroy his vessels. God is calling you to a place of accountability. He wants you to come to the altar. Turn yourself over to him. Let him get into those vital areas. Remove those things that needs to be removed from you. Come on, guys, let's stop having the enemy play games and use us for unrighteousness. God is calling you to a place of accountability. Stop abusing that man. Stop abusing that woman. This is the word of the Lord.